Hey guys, so my kitchen is definitely one of the last spaces in my home that's kind of been left the same since we moved in. You know how you kind of just put things in places and you weren't really sure how to fully optimize the space yet? So it's definitely safe to say it's lacking some organization, but what I find with organization is that sometimes it also really lacks aesthetics. So I've been planning some really easy and affordable DIYs and upgrades that are rental friendly, that are gonna help me organize this space, but also my goal is to make sure that they're gonna be aesthetically pleasing solutions. We're mixing form and function. You know? I've already started to make some upgrades recently, like adding these two gorgeous DIY floating shelves above the fridge. Right now they're sort of half finished, like they're not stained or sealed or anything, and I'll have our editors insert a picture. Before it just kind of had this huge awkward space above my kind of short fridge, and with these floating shelves it gave me extra storage and just absolutely transformed this corner. But right now they're just collecting items like the top of my fridge was doing before and that is just not what this space is intended for at all so make sure you stay till the end because i am so excited for the vision to come to life up there oh my goodness with that being said though i want to move on to our first diy where i'm going to show you guys how to make some shelf risers and yeah let's go come with me we're here So I already went to Home Depot this morning and I picked up some wood and the most inexpensive piece I could find for a project like this was a one by 10 by eight piece of, they called it shelving, but I literally only paid $12 for it. And right now I'm only making two, but I could definitely make three shelf risers out of the whole piece. And I actually had Home Depot cut all the pieces for me. If you don't know this already, your local Home Depot will cut wood for you, either for free or a very small fee if you have like a ridiculous amount of cuts but I literally just saved myself so much time and now all I have to do is assemble this is definitely the same wood that they make um, like hamster cage <laughs> shavings from <laughs> anyway first I'm going with some wood glue and then drilling a small pilot hole for my screw to secure the sides to the top piece The steps and dimensions for the shelf risers will be posted on our blog at thesorygirls.com, but I totally encourage you to customize the size to fit your space. And in case your supplier doesn't cut wood for you, an easy powerless tool option would be to use a super simple method I mentioned back when I was customizing my office slash vanity corner. You could get a piece of wood that's already roughly eight inches wide, and then for each section, you would just use a handsaw and clamp a straight edge ruler to help guide the blade for each cut. Now I'm just giving these a light sand with some sandpaper to deal with any rough edges and wipe them clean before I go in with some stain. I'm going in with this Classic Oak Satin One Step product by Verathane. It's pretty much just a stain and a seal in one and I'm applying this with a paintbrush. Okay, so the shelf risers are drying and I think they look amazing. They're gonna be great for organizing honestly anything. Like you could put them on the counters, you could put them in the cupboards. I think I'm gonna put them on the shelves most likely. The last thing I wanna do today is go to the thrift store because I'm looking for some large jars or containers and I already have some. I believe my larger ones are from Ikea, but I really wanna to add to my collection. I really just think they're great for things like food storage as well as styling purposes. It's kind of a win-win situation, but I wanna opt for secondhand this time. So let's go see what we can find. You're literally the cutest thing in the whole world. Oh, big stretch. Le parfait. Here's your French word. Okay guys, I'm really having some luck. Like I found so many jars. And before I went to bed, I finally finished staining the shelves.
Good morning, guys. How are we feeling today? Same day for you, new day for me. I'm feeling pretty good. I am just outside my bulk food supplier because they have this really neat program where you can actually bring in your jars or containers, whatever it is, and actually fill them or restock them straight from the bulk food supplier. This is amazing because it eliminates the need for all the excess packaging that is usually just the fate of having to buy processed foods. Basically, they weigh your jars and then you fill them and then they subtract the weight of the jars from the amount that you filled. And honestly, buying bulk typically is just a lot more affordable and as I mentioned just uses a lot less excess waste or single-use plastics. Okay got the goods literally so many goodies in here and do I do this all the time with all the food I buy? No. Unfortunately, I think we all can agree on the fact that sometimes convenience just wins, but choosing to practice sustainability isn't about having a perfect process. It's about knowing that you can make a difference within the small things that you choose to do on a daily basis. That's what this is about. This is just one of the small things that I like to do. Hopefully it rubs off on other people, you know? Um, now I'm gonna go home to work on another little DIY project and I am so excited to show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Literally needs a seatbelt because my car thinks it is a human, so. <laughs> okay, you guys want to see something truly beautiful? To me, at least. Look at all of them. I love you so much. <laughs> I just think it's so aesthetically pleasing. So you can label these however you want. I like to use a chalk marker. Basically just like chalk in marker form. And then I have these reusable labels and that is how I keep track, in case I might forget what something is. And I like to put it on the bottom, because I don't want to see the labels. I don't want to see it. And if I ever want to refer to the nutrition info, I just actually take a picture at the store, and then I can refer back to them. What? <laughs> what? My cat thinks I'm eating whenever I'm in the kitchen. If I just, if I'm making a tea, she's like, three. I also just picked up some white polymer clay because this is what we're gonna be using for our next project. Oh. Right now, my sponge is just this kind of loosey goose in the sink, and so I wanted to make a little sponge holder for it because I think it deserves a designated spot. Okay, I'm gonna start out by warming up the clay. It just makes it a lot easier to work with, but it does take a little bit of love and massaging. Massaging? Kneading! Takes a lot of kneading. Oh. Okay, much better. I sort of just want to make like an oblong kind of shape mimicking a stone, but it's gonna be like a little taco shape. Yeah, I'm gonna roll it out. I kind of want to add pepper to this. Um, we've done this many times here on the channel. It kind of just gives the polymer clay a speckled stone look and it's going to match my dishware. I'm just working here on a oven safe silicone mat and I'm just rolling this out to in between a quarter inch to half an inch. I have a spatula. Now I'm just going to trim the sides a little. And I'm sort of just testing as I go. I have a clean sponge here. This sponge is actually really cool. It's not made with any plastic. It's made from wood cellulose and coconut fiber. So it's biodegradable. I think I'm happy with this width and I kind of love the sort of soft stone shape it has. I wouldn't go any thinner than this because you don't want it to like fall over when it's baking. And now I'm just gonna spend some time smoothing out the edges with my fingers. And we're pretty much done. Now bake accordingly to the instructions on the package. And the very last step is coating it with a polymer clay glaze. I'm just applying it with a paintbrush and this is going to help keep the sponge holder water resistant so make sure you do all sides.
Okay, so now I want to make some upgrades to my kitchen island. We added this when we moved in. I believe it's called the For Hoya. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying that right. For Hoya. <laughs> And unfortunately, I didn't see this color online anymore, but I did see one with a white base and still the same butcher block top, if you are interested. With hope to make this look a little bit more expensive than an Ikea item, I want to put on some new drawer fronts. And I made these out of a scrap piece of birch veneer plywood. It is a quarter inch, and this is also made of birch. So that worked out. And I cut these using the same method that I mentioned earlier, clamping a straight edge to guide my blade. I then sanded the edges and finished it with the same varnish that we were using yesterday. First, I used some sandpaper to rough up the drawer fronts and went in with wood glue to attach the new panels. I also made sure not to stain the backside of the panel so the wood glue could adhere better. I also used tape to help me hold as I was figuring out the placement. Once they were in place, I stacked some heavy objects on top to add pressure as they dried. Once the drawer faces had time to set, I pre-drilled some holes in the center for new knobs to go in tomorrow when I style this place. Now I'm gonna add three of these little cup hooks. These are one inch to the side here so that we can hang our I don't know, barbecue utensils, any like extra things. Finally, I'm adding this wine glass rack that I found at Ikea to the underside of the island, and this is gonna help me swap space between my island and my cupboards. And I am simply attaching it with a small pilot hole and some screws. Just for example, now I can bring my stemware and put it out here. Very nice. And I also plan to do the same thing with my dishware and bring it onto the floating shelves because honestly, I love my dishware Ow. and my glasses, but what I don't love is seeing the food packaging or the giant blender on my counter. So since we don't have a lot of storage, I wanna bring the things that I enjoy out and then we make room for things like this to go in. Do you catch what I'm trying to say? Does, that make, does this make sense? Now I am so ready to bring the vision to life. It's time to reorganize some things and style my new upgrades. I am so excited. This moment I've been waiting for. Yay. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed these simple DIYs. I know I am very pleased with the upgrades. The shelf risers really help to maximize space and accessibility to my things. And now that I'm storing my nice dishware and non-perishables outside, I was able to create more space inside my cupboards for the unattractive items. So overall, it's feeling a lot more organized in here and I'm so glad I didn't have to compromise aesthetics in the process. If you guys enjoyed today's video with form and function in mind, definitely check out this one that I referenced earlier where I upgraded my vanity slash office corner and I will see you in the next one. When you're ready to use it. Ow. I really am happy with how this DIY drawer insert turned out. 